This video will focus on the voting method called sequential pairwise. So in the sequential pairwise voting method, we use something called an agenda. Agenda is just a listing of the candidates. So for example, if we have an election with candidates A, B, C, D, and E, then an agenda might be the list a, C, B, E, D. So it's just a listing of these candidates. With sequential pairwise, voting starts with one of these agendas and it pits the first candidate on the list against the second in a one on one contest. The loser is deleted and the winner then moves on to confront the third candidate on the list. So in our example, we would start by pitting A and C together. If A wins in a one-to-one -one contest, C would be deleted, and A would then go one-to-one -one against candidate B, and we continue down the list. The process continues throughout the entire agenda, and the one candidate remaining at the end is declared our winner. So let's look at an example. Here we have three voters um, voting at choosing between four candidates, A, B, C, and D, and we're going to use the agenda A, B, C, D. So we'll start with the first two candidates on the list uh, and do a head-to-head -head matchup of A versus B, and we're going to record how many voters prefer each of these two candidates. So when we look at our preference list ballots, we see that two voters prefer A to B. They have a higher on their preference list, and only a single voter prefers B to A. So in this case, we would say that A wins that head-to-head -head matchup, and candidate B is deleted. So we go back to our agenda. Candidate B has been deleted, and our next head-to-head -head matchup will be A versus C. So we look at our voters' preference lists, we see that only one voter prefers A to C, whereas two voters prefer C to A. So C wins this head-to-head -head matchup and candidate A has been deleted. We go back to our agenda one last time and the two remaining candidates, C will go head-to-head -head against candidate D. Looking at our preference list ballots, we see that one voter prefers C to D while two voters prefer D to C. And again, it's all about which candidate is listed higher in their preference list. So in this head-to-head, -head, we would say that D wins, candidate C is deleted. We've been through our entire agenda. And so candidate D would win for this particular agenda. Great, let's do another example. So here we have eight voters choosing between five candidates, A through E, and we're gonna use the agenda B, D, C, A, E. Okay, so our first head-to-head -head matchup will be candidate B versus candidate D. Okay, so looking at the preference lists, we see that there are five voters who prefer B and three who prefer D. So we would say, that B wins this head-to-head -head matchup, candidate D is eliminated. So moving down the agenda, up next will be B versus C. B versus C, looking at our preference list, there are six voters who prefer B to C and only two who prefer C to B. So B wins that head-to-head -head as well, candidate C is eliminated. We go back to our agenda, up next will be B versus A. In B versus A, there are three voters who prefer candidate B and five voters who prefer candidate A. So A wins and candidate B is now eliminated. Lastly, our last head-to-head, -head, looking at the agenda, A will go head-to-head -head against candidate E. There are three voters who prefer candidate A, but five who prefer E. So E wins. Candidate A has been eliminated. We're done with the R agenda. And so candidate E wins this election. Great. Now, the downside of sequential pairwise voting is that it fa 
fails what's called the Pareto condition. So the Pareto condition states that if everyone prefers one candidate to another candidate, then that latter candidate should not be among the winners. And the Pareto condition uh, is named after an Italian economist. Um, so if we look back at that very first example that we did for the sequential pairwise voting, we had D as our final winner um, using the agenda A, B, C, D. But if you look at our three voters, notice that every single one of our voters actually preferred B to candidate D. And so that shouldn't happen, right? If everyone prefers B to D, then D should not have been the winner. Um, so that seems like a, not a very fair conclusion. Um, so this is a drawback of the sequential pairwise method. Um, another drawback of this method, you may be wondering about the agenda. So different agenda orders can change the outcome. So for example, with the exact same election that we have here, if instead we use the agenda DCBA, you can go back and practice that example and see that uh, candidate A will be the winner in that case. Uh, and we'll talk more about how uh, we can manipulate the agenda um, to get the outcome that we would like uh, in a couple of videos in the future. Uh, I want to close this um, section on sequential pairwise voting with a real life example of when this method is used. And it's an important example. Uh, so the U.S. House of Representatives considers a bill, an amendment to the bill can be offered, and then two votes are taken. So the first vote is whether to accept the amendment. And if that is accepted, then the second vote will be between the amended bill versus no bill at all. Now, if the amendment is defeated, then the second vote would be between the original bill and no bill at all. So in 1956, the House was considering a bill that would provide federal funding for the construction of schools. An amendment was offered that would only provide this federal funding to states with integrated school systems. So in the House more or less could be divided into three groups at the time, Republicans, Northern Democrats, and Southern Democrats. Now, Republicans generally opposed federal aid, but they favored integration. So their first choice was no bill at all, um, but then they did prefer the amended bill to the original bill. Northern Democrats favored federal aid and integration. So their first choice was the amended bill, but then preferred the original bill to no bill at all. Southern Democrats, on the other hand, who came from states with segregated school systems, they wanted the aid, but they abhorred the amendment. Remember, this was the 1950s. So uh, our three preference lists looked like this, uh, including the number um, of each uh, at the time. Okay. So what was the outcome of the two votes? So uh, we're going to use sequential pairwise voting. And the agenda is set by the decision to first consider whether we want to accept the amended bill or the original bill, and then to decide whether to adopt that decision versus to pass the bill at all. Um, so our agenda is going to be original bill, amended bill, and then no bill. Okay, so using that agenda, our first head-to-head -head matchup is original bill versus amended bill. We see that um, only 116. Um, only the Southern Democrats preferred the original bill. Um, the others all preferred the amended bill. So the amended bill would win in that head-to-head -head matchup. Um, and then there would be a vote. There was a vote between the amended bill versus no bill at all. Um, and we see that only the Northern Democrats preferred amended to no bill at all. So our final result then would be no bill at all. Okay, so let's think about the political strategy then um, that went into play. So here's our preference list ballots. Remember, our final result was no bill at all. So if you were a Northern Democrat, should you have introduced the amendment? Um, as a Northern Democrat, it actually would have been a mistake to introduce the amendment because the final result, remember, was no bill at all, which was their least preferred alternative. So to the Northern Democrat, even the original bill was preferred than no bill at all. So for a Northern Democrat, introducing this amendment would have been a mistake. 
what about if you were a Republican? Well, for the Republicans, introducing the amendment was a really good strategy. It took advantage of the split in the Democratic Party at the time. So the result of the introduction of that amendment, that the final result remember, was no bill at all, which was the Republicans' first preference. Um, however, to the Republicans, even the amended bill was preferred to the original bill. So for this case, it would have been a really good strategy for the Republicans um, to introduce this amendment. Um, so I just kind of wanted to give you that as a real life example of some strategy that can come into play when using the sequential pairwise method. But that's all for this video. Thanks, guys. Bye.